before this video even like gets started in any way, I just want to say ADHD is not currently ruining my relationship. Emphasis on current. But ADHD does make relationships difficult because the symptoms of ADHD are difficult to deal with in certain situations and in certain contexts and that's what I want to talk about. So this is just me sitting down and casually talking about the ways that ADHD makes relationships and my marriage more difficult. ADHD is simply just a dopamine imbalance. So a lot of the symptoms of ADHD are due to the fact that people with ADHD operate off of what fulfills them like the dopamine that fills their brain they kind of like search for that in order to like have energy like it gives them energy so they go towards things that like make them feel fulfilled and anything that doesn't like is kind of like minimal like it's not really on their top list of priorities or whatever so i'm applying to go somewhere and i just wanted to know are there accommodations for people who struggle with time blindness and being on time it is so hard for me and my husband it is so hard for me to like have patience some days because I know like my husband is gonna be like he's not gonna accommodate the amount of time he needs to take to like get ready and then for us to get out the door my name is Rosanna welcome to my casual YouTube channel this is where I talk absolutely anything casual or monumental in relation to life and life's events and life's topics i know this message is so obnoxious and annoying but seriously if you could just give me a like or a comment or like any sort of engagement it helps videos be seen from my channel so it just kind of reaches more people i know it sounds a little bit manipulative and a little bit like i this video hasn't even barely started why are you asking me to like it but like if at any moment you like anything <laughs> or you feel the need to comment go ahead and do that. I really would appreciate it. And if you don't, it's a free country. You feel free to make that choice. Uh, today it's ADHD. I wanted to sit down and talk about ADHD because as somebody who's married to somebody with ADHD, I just have a lot of thoughts and opinions. Like I just have a lot of experiences that I just need to get off my chest. As well as there was this TikTok about time blindness that was going crazy like a couple weeks if not months ago about this girl who was like calling an institution at, uh, she from the TikTok describing that she called an institution asking if they had time blindness accommodations and then apparently like her mom I guess was like a commentator that was like no institution is going to accommodate you in time blindness and if you don't know time blindness like is associated with ADHD because it's not like oh you can't see the time you have no idea you have no idea of the concept of time but it's like it makes knowing the time very difficult like you are time impaired basically like 10 minutes to you could seem like 20. That's just in my experience and in my opinion from somebody who lives with somebody who is who very much has time blindness. It's very much real to me. So I just got yelled at for asking a very reasonable question. So I'm applying to go somewhere and I just wanted to know, are there accommodations for people who struggle with time blindness and being on time, you know? And then the person I was with interrupted and acted like I was asking something else. And then when we were done, they actually started yelling at me and saying that accommodations for time blindness doesn't exist. And if you struggle with being on time, you'll never be able to get a job, you know, provided you're trying your absolute best to be there. And then they're like, your stupid generation wants to destroy the workplace. The idea of time blindness got brought up into the internet, and as the internet does, they talk about it. And it's not in, like, the most respectful uh, internet discourse way ever. A lot of people were like, time blindness is not a thing. Like, nobody's going to accommodate you for the things that you lack. Like, you need to just do that yourself. Like, accommodate yourself. You know what I mean? Um, but as somebody who has a husband with ADHD... I know my husband would never like call and be like, do you accommodate time? <laughs> I know that would, that would never happen. Um, but I do kind of commend somebody who at least is willing to like make a call for something that affects them on the day to day because they know at least if you ask, you're going to get an answer. If you don't ask, you're never going to know. So I appreciated that TikTok, but I know that a lot of the world was very critical because they were like, what the hell? Time blindness girl wake yourself up you know but it just sparked a lot of feelings in me i wanted to like advocate for this girl i'm not doing that now like but uh i was just it would just made me like real a little bit about how adhd 
and time blindness has affected my marriage and has like to be honest kind of made it difficult i love my husband my husband is the best i could not imagine a life without him i could not imagine anybody else being with me okay but there are things that make our relationship difficult there are things that everybody everybody's relationship is like difficult in a different way and i feel like if we were more real about it if we were just completely honest about the things that like happen in our relationships um i i just feel like it would just make life a little bit easier to like know that other people are going through things because even i don't know even when like celebrities break up you're always like i wonder what happened with them you know what i mean not saying that they owe us anything or like people who break up owe you any sort of explanation but like it would be kind of nice to know oh i i didn't know this person was struggling with that thing like maybe i could relate to it and like also kind of work through it in the way that like maybe they did or didn't you know i don't know yeah background me and my husband uh started dating my freshman year of college before i even get into like background i do want to say the reason that i feel so passionately about the role adhd plays in my relationship is due to the fact that when me and my husband were engaged we went to premarital counseling <laughs> And one of the things that was recommended to us to have like a su successful marriage was to read a book about marriage or like read a book that we can both bond over um, before we get married. And we were both looking for books. One day we were like on the phone because we were long distance, like for like five hour long distance um, by the time I was like a junior or senior in college. And one of the books that me and my husband chose was kind of random. It was called uh, The ADHD Effect the ADHD effect on marriage and Chris actually pointed it out and he was like we should read this book because it obviously I have ADHD this is about marriage like I think it'll be a great book for us and I was like okay sure I didn't think it was gonna be like monumentally life-changing which is exactly what it was it changed my life that book is the reason why I have such understanding and patience and no like well not no well, I have a lot less frustration towards my husband when he, like, operates the way that he does in a way that, like, I can't relate to. So, like, um, I had felt frustration and, like, anger and negativity towards my husband for, like, certain things related to, like, the symptoms of ADHD, which are time blindness, easily distract distractibility, uh, uh, like, starting things and not being able to finish them. I'd say that like in the very beginning, it really wasn't that big of a deal. But now that we're married, I'm so happy that I read the book because I swear my marriage would be in a completely different place if I had just not even, we had not entertained this book at all. But anyways, so we got told to read a book. We read, um, he read a little bit of the book. I fully dove into the book. I'm maybe, I didn't get like the full way through it because I was in college and like, how the heck was I going to finish a book in college when I'm finishing a research paper that requires me to read 10, like 10 million books, you know? But I got through the majority of it, I'd say. And the general idea of the book is rooted in the idea that ADHD is simply just a dopamine imbalance. So a lot of the symptoms of ADHD are due to the fact that people with ADHD operate off of what fulfills them like the dopamine that fills their brain they kind of like search for that in order to like have energy like it gives them energy so they go towards things that like make them feel fulfilled and anything that doesn't like is kind of like minimal like it's not really on their top list of priorities or whatever so in relationships it makes it really hard to like function like a healthy stable uh, pair because like if you're both Let's say, like, you, um, I don't know, like, okay, even something simple, like, you got, you both go out on a date night. It is so hard for me and my husband, it is so hard for me to, like, have patience some days, because I know, like, my husband is gonna be, like, he's not gonna accommodate the amount of time he needs to take to, like, get ready and then for us to get out the door. We're going to be 10 minutes late every time, so I have to accommodate, I have to accommodate and pick up for that, um, or, like, uh, if you're doing something that he doesn't necessarily want to do, or, like, if you're not ADHD, your ADHD spouse wants to do and you don't... No. If the person with ADHD wants to do something... If you want to do something the ADHD person doesn't want to do, uh, unfortunately, 
what the hell am I saying? Sorry, scrap that. Let me start off with a new example because I completely lost my train of thought. Basically, if you have an interest in something and they don't have an interest in something, it's going to make that thing much harder because it doesn't feel like there are levels of dopamine. So like, that's like majority of a relationship is you just doing things that like, like your spouse or your partner wants to do. You know what I mean? Um, it just makes it hard because it like doesn't fulfill them. Uh, so then like the symptoms are like, my husband, if I tell him, hey, could you please, I don't know, like do the dishes when he doesn't want to do the dishes. It like, it's a, it's a chore, like for real, it's a chore. Or if I say like, hey, could you cook for us one of these nights? He'll be like, then this may just be like his personality. You know what I mean? Like a lot of this isn't universal to everybody with ADHD, but like if he does something that's outside of his interests, it is, it leads to then like me as the partner nagging, which is a common thing of people with, uh, a common theme of relationships with ADHD is like you have the person with ADHD who has the symptoms that make things a little bit more difficult. And it's just the symptoms, okay? It's not the person. It's not the person and the personality. Uh, but the symptoms are hard to deal with as somebody who needs to deal with them, your AD AKA the non-ADHD spouse, or maybe the AD other ADHD spouse. But so then you're like, could you, so then you, you as a, like the person who like feels the need to get things done or feels the need to operate the way you've always operated. It like builds this like, negativity up inside you because you're like why can't you get things done on time why can't you just do this thing the way that I do it why can't we just operate normally you know what I mean I think in the beginning and she talks about this in the book Melissa or Orlov Orlov or Orlov not sure but about how when you're in the beginning stages of dating somebody with ADHD it's like you have never been loved the way that you will be loved with somebody with ADHD um because they're so like that's another symptom is hyper fixation on things like i said like whatever fills their dopamine is what they're gonna focus on and something that kind of broke it didn't break my heart but it kind of hurt me was uh the reason that somebody with adhd in a relationship is so such a good like lover in the beginning is because like they need something to hyper fixate on and they want to give all their attention to you but it's not necessarily about you which like really hurts it's about them needing to regulate themselves. So like them constantly texting you, them always wanting to see you, them just being there for you is something that like feels good as a receiver, but it's just the way that ADHD people operate. Like it's not necessarily you, but it could also be like, of course there are factors that are you. But the thing is like my husband would text me all the time being like, you're so beautiful, I love you. You're, you know, like just, um, what would I do? Not what would I do without you? That sounds kind of love bomby. It wasn't. He was just hyper fixated and like very, very communicative. Anyway, what was I saying? So in the beginning, it's like fun and exciting and like everything's kind of like spontaneous and like you don't really care about in in the very beginning, like for the first like three months, you don't really care about like the time blindness piece because you're just getting lost in each other's your minutes feel like hours, whatever. Anyways, um, when you're like falling in love with somebody you don't critically think about the things that could plague your relationship later you don't, you don't but cut to when me and my husband were engaged like that was a time truly that was a time because when you're wedding planning that's like a project for you and your spouse to do together and it's so and especially I, I was in college he was in college while we were wedding planning it is so time consuming it is so emotionally, physically, mentally draining. And uh, when you are with somebody with ADHD and they like don't have a passion for what you're doing, okay, the wedding planning is when I feel like I started to hate the symptoms of ADHD because before that it was just like, oh, he'd be late to like a couple dates, whatever. Oh, he's like easily distracted. I knew that. Like, oh, he's you know I don't I, I don't I don't know there are like little things that I didn't really care about that much but then wedding planning was like oh he's like 45 minutes late to this FaceTime call we were gonna talk about um food options oh he didn't call the people that needed to get the food done oh I'm having to call the people to, that need to get the food done oh all of a sudden I have this like resentment and anger towards him 
oh, I'm upset as hell. Like, I'm crying in my car because I'm, I can't handle it. <laughs> like, just a spiral. I was talking about the wedding and about how the wedding process and planning a wedding with somebody with ADHD is difficult because I, ne I didn't necessarily want a traditional wedding. I wanted to elope. And having that pressure put on me to mainly plan the wedding because I knew it wasn't within his interests and it was barely in mine. I knew that I had to pick up the slack, not solely based off ADHD. Some of it is just like personality traits and like our characters working together. But for the most part, the symptoms of like distractedness, time blindness, um, starting things and not finishing them, not getting to things that you said that you're going to is hard when you're planning something, which then now in current day, my marriage, I love my marriage, okay? My marriage is great. I, uh, But, like, to be real also, me and my husband have gone through, like, spouts of having very hard times. We've been in couples counseling before. We just got off of couples counseling after being in for, like, a few months um, just to figure out, like, how to accommodate each other and how to properly love each other, you know? Uh, and that's difficult, not only, not solely because of ADHD, but when you're committing to working on your marriage and when you're committing to other things, like I'm in, I, I work all day, he's in school all day, my day ends and I like to have leisurely time and to focus on house things and then to cook and then to focus on him. His work day doesn't end when mine does, so his mind is like constantly on separate things than mine is. And it makes it hard to manage because I feel like, just to be real, like I just feel like sometimes our priorities in relation to our marriage are different because we have different areas of focus. And I feel like my area of focus is more so on the marriage because I'm not a student anymore. But then also because he's hyper fixated on school. So sometimes I feel like I take a backseat to everything else he has going on. And sometimes I can feel my behavior doing that too. Being like, oh, I don't need to distract him. I don't need to, um, I don't need to bother him with like typical things like doing the dishes because he's like, he, he's in school and he, I just need to give him his space so he can like properly function. When in reality, I would love to be able for us to just like work on our marriage equally. And it doesn't feel that equal sometimes when you're, um, in a relationship with somebody with ADHD whatever they're hyper focused on is just something that you have to accommodate to as well and it, like sometimes it sucks because I, I I'm like also just I feel like I'm waiting for when he gets out of school and I'm waiting for our marriage to be the one thing that we can all both focus on when we're both working and we can just focus on the marriage versus like right now he's in school so he has to focus on school the marriage and like house things i guess or a plethora of other things um but right now our attention is so split that i i like i can't wait till and i can't wait to see what it's like when we're both kind of on more an even playing field um adhd will still will still affect our marriage dramatically probably but it just, it would be nice to take away some things that won't take up most of his brain space. You know what I mean? I like, we didn't even have, because we were so poor when we got married, um, we didn't even have a honeymoon. We still haven't had a honeymoon because I'm work. I started working immediately when I got a job and he started school immediately. So we haven't really had time to take off. And then on top of that, we've been like working in the summertime. So we didn't really have time to take off to focus just on ourselves. Our marriage counselor recommended, which I recommend to anybody at any age, for us to just have an hour, like pretty much as as many nights as you can, an hour of just sitting down and talking. And it sounds so simple, but really just to focus on talking about things related to you as an individual, as couples, and don't make it surface level. Don't make it like something that you could talk about at like dinner or out at a restaurant. Make it so specific to be like these are things that I want to bring up that have been on my mind or these are things that I want to talk about that I've never talked about with somebody else and I find that that really just keeps us really connected as a couple because I think um sometimes it can just 
be so easy in the relationship with somebody who's constantly distracted and constantly, um, I don't know, not focused on the things that you're focused on to just feel like your marriage isn't a priority. Like, I, I don't, I'm not saying that I don't think my husband thinks our marriage is a priority, but sometimes it can feel like that. Like, it can feel like, oh, he would much rather uh, work on this specific project and then uh, do that one thing on his computer in his free time than just, like, talk to me for, like, a little bit. Or, like, we would much rather watch a TV show instead of just playing, like, fun little games that we used to because I want to accommodate his, like, brain space and how much he can handle. Um, but this hour of time that we've been prescribed by our uh, couples counselor has kind of changed our relationship, not, like, monumentally because we don't do it that often, but has changed our relationship because it, it has brought back our desire to just sit and talk to each other and be present for a dedicated hour just to talk about very specific things that you can get like deep about not just like things you can kind of just brush off and be like oh that's funny or like I don't know just it just really helps you focus on like the deeper part of your relationship that made you fall in love as corny as it sounds but seriously because it's it's like so easy to feel like that just doesn't exist and honestly we're in the like we're in the beginning stages of our marriage and I'm nervous for having children because I just know and I feel like I'm being told through media representation, through parents themselves, that once you have kids, everything changes. And in the book, there's a bunch of stories of people who've had kids with somebody with ADHD and it just adds a lot of stress onto them because in the ADHD relationship, the person who's a non-ADHD person feels like they are this mother figure like some and I said I've said this to Chris a couple times like sometimes I feel like a mother figure because I'm constantly having to nag him about things that he like forgets or things that he gets distracted by and I don't want to be a mother figure to my husband and children and I know that's me speaking way ahead in the future that's me speaking out of my butt I don't know what the heck is going to happen with the future but it makes me nervous for the future knowing how we operate now I'm nervous for how we're going to operate with children because people with ADHD have said sometimes I get nervous that he will forget to like feed the children dinner like or sometimes and I I have had that exact fear because Chris sometimes forgets to just feed himself which is not a ch it's just like a whatever you're focused on is going to distract you from needs and wants and needs you know um but sometimes I get nervous about having children because it's not like all of a sudden you have to cater to people who need things and then the symptoms go away it's like no the symptoms are going to be there you just have to figure out how the heck to accommodate them when you have people who are depending on you which is so nerve-wracking um and I also just have anxiety so I was already going to be reeling about that anyways ADHD or not <laughs> but everything is nerve-wracking <laughs> like everything when you have when you have a spouse who has ADHD is not everything but for the most part when things are difficult it's hard when somebody's distracted or when somebody doesn't when somebody's time impaired or when somebody um can't follow through or finish things you know it just like makes it difficult so that's why I said the ADHD is difficult ADHD isn't currently ruining my relationship but it is making it hard um Right now, me and my husband are in a really good spot. Like, I feel like we... You, but you, you, it's always when you're in the best spot with somebody that, like, something happens. You're like, this is going so well. What the heck? Why did... Why will... Why would we ever argue? Why Why would anything bad ever happen? There's no need. Anytime I... Anytime I'm ever gonna argue, I'll think about this moment and be like, nothing matters. Like, we just want to be happy and vibe and chill. And then something will actually happen and you're like, why the heck? That's... What? <laughs> like... Um, but yeah, I'm nervous to say me and my husband are in a good spot because every time you say you're in a good spot, it's jinxed and then something crazy happens that you just cannot predict. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, this is like, this, this is the type of rant that I, if I had a thousand subs, I would put on Patreon, but I know that also anybody on the tube probably needs it. Uh, but if you want 
you can subscribe. I'm trying to reach a thousand subs so I can start a Patreon so I can make, and it's, my Patreon could be so cheap. I think my cheapest year is going to be like $3 a month. Just so I can like go on more journalistic type rants without feeling nervous that my co-workers can just have access to them. I, if my co-workers see this channel, they don't. You don't see this. It's not real. You're dreaming. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's really all I had to say. I feel like this is mainly for people who are spouses of somebody with ADHD, and it's going to hit like a small population, but it's a population that needs to be hit. So if you enjoyed it in any way, any way shape or form please let me know give me a comment or a like or something or nothing hopefully you're in a free country <laughs> like i am like i am um so that like you have the freedom to make that choice but just like no like i would really appreciate that choice if you do give me a like or a comment or something uh yeah uh wherever you are whatever you're doing whoever you are i hope you have a good morning afternoon or night